All right, so the candle class that I did from the last video was yesterday, so I figured I would go through and do a follow-up video on some things that I can improve on and things that went really well. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcraft, and today we're gonna to talk about uh, basically a follow-up to the candle class that I did yesterday. If you saw the last video, it was all about the supplies that you would need. Uh, there was one or two things I left off of there, so I'll go into that. And then I wanted to talk about some of the things that I pulled away from that class that I'll be fixing in the next ones. So first off, the class went extremely well. I've been doing these for a couple years now. It has been a long time since I did the last one, just with shutdowns and everything. Uh, so it's nice to have these back up and going, but this is also the first time that I've done one in my own shop. So it was a little bit different this time. I'll go ahead and put some pictures up here of the class and kind of everything that we had going. I ran two different classes, one at 12 o'clock and one at three o'clock, and they both went really well. The 12 o'clock class, there were three people, and then the three o'clock class, there were four people. Now we have each of these classes booked for six maximum people, uh, and I released the actual class probably about three days before. So the fact that we got that many people within about three days of launching the class, I'm actually real happy with. And we've already got people signed up for next weekend, so it's going really well so far. And of course, I'm gonna be pushing the heck out of it to get more people signed up and try to get it basically filled every Saturday uh, and then kind of move from there. I know I talked about the last class, opening it up into uh, daily candle classes and evening candle classes. And I think stuff like that will kind of develop over time once people hear that the candle class is open. But all in all, the class went really well. Uh, I've been, do like I said, I've been doing this for a while. I know exactly what to do going step by step and going through everything. But of course, that doesn't mean there isn't room for improvement. And that's exactly what I was taking away from this one. Uh, the bottles that I showed you in the last time that we got from Webstaurant Store are really nice. They look good on the table. And I didn't mention it in the previous one, or I think I might have, but uh, I mentioned the liquor pour top. So when you tip the glass, they're supposed to pour out an exact amount. Uh, those don't work at all. So I, I'm going to look into getting maybe a different pour top, see if it works a little bit better than this one. But every time I poured it, I would get a different measurement every time. And it it wasn't like a little bit. I know they're supposed to be a little bit off and they even say on the website, it's it's an, and it's an it's an approximate amount, kind of give or take. But this one was way off. Uh, it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be a 0.875 ounce pour every single time. Some pours I was getting one and a half ounces. Some pours I was getting less than a half an ounce. So it was wildly different. So I basically went back to my old method, which is, which is just a one and a half inch shot glass. And I'll go ahead and post some pictures right here. I picked those up from the Dollar Tree. I think they're $1.25 for three of them. So they work really well, but you have to let everybody in the class know that you're only gonna fill it halfway or whatever the candle vessel is. But for the one that we were using, we filled it halfway. That's about the perfect amount of oil to go in that particular candle. So I basically had everybody pour halfway up. And the good thing about those is even if they under pour or over pour just a little bit, which does happen, it's gonna be so minimal. So for our candle classes, we do 8% oil. So if they under pour, it's gonna be about 7%. And if they over pour, it's gonna be like 9%. So even if they get seven, eight, and 9% fragrance load in that candle, it's gonna be just fine with the wax and the wicks that we use. And the only reason I make that distinction is a lot of people ask that one, what happens if somebody over pours? So I definitely make sure that I don't have something to where they're accidentally getting like 14 and 15%. <laughs> but the one thing I'm gonna do going forward is I wanna get some bar jiggers, which are these things here, and these work really well. It's just, it's an easy pour system and you can get these in a couple different sizes. And I think I found one that was like a 0.75. So even if they fill it to the, to the very top, they're only gonna get 8% oil again, which is perfect. The other thing that I'm gonna be switching from this class that I showed you in the last video are those slate boards. They look really nice. Uh, but they just don't look good after first use. Uh, the moment you start pouring oil on them uh, or even start cleaning them off, they're real brittle. They start to sh they start to kind of break off when you rub. I used Windex to clean them off at the end. And then even some of the oil and even markings or anything like that from maybe the spoon dragging across it, they start to leave marks. And it's not like a, it's not like brass or copper. If you've ever seen brass or copper countertops at like a bar or something like that, when people set drinks on them, they leave marks all over it and it kind of develops like a real nice rustic or kind of patina look like it's been well used. And I was kind of hoping it would do that with the slate, but it did not. The slate just looks terrible after a couple times uh, of using it. So I think we're just going to switch over to stainless or aluminum trays 
Uh, they look really nice. And then of course, inside the aluminum tray, we're gonna get some wax paper that's branded, the Boho Soft oil name, and I think cloven ivy on top of that, and a, and a few other things. So we'll get it branded so it actually looks nice. And then of course, as far as cleaning goes, those are extremely easy. So you just pull the paper out and just throw them away. And then of course the aluminum trays, uh, almost like baking sheets, you can get some that are a little bit nicer than that, but just it, they look exactly like that. Those again are extremely easy to clean. Even if you get wax on those, you run a heat gun over them and you can just wipe them right off. And pretty much anything to stay away from the uh, fiberglass or the plastic trays, those just end up looking really bad after a while. And I'd say probably the biggest takeaway from this class was being able to smell the oils. I know in previous classes, I would just take the full bottles of oil so people could just open them up and smell them. But for this one, we wanted to have the class uh, and all the materials look a little bit nicer. So we're going with stainless or copper, brass, uh, and full glass uh, bottles so that you can see everything. But the problem with the ones that we were using is you couldn't smell the oil through the top. So what we ended up doing for this class was just getting some paper towels, folding them up a little bit, and then basically, basically pouring the oil into the paper towel a little bit so it just kind of wet it so you can smell it. Now, of course, that worked perfectly fine. It's just not a real nice looking method. So I think what we're going to do is get some bottles like this next time so that you can actually pick them up, open up the top, put the cork uh, back in so it's nice and sealed, but you can open them up so you can actually smell exactly what the oil is going to smell like. And the other thing that I'd like to narrow down or get figured out a little bit better is what to do while the candles are cooling. Uh, I'm still looking for the basically the the license I need to do any type of alcohol serving so so that we can do wine pouring at our events ourselves and not have to bring in a bartender. So I just started looking that stuff up yesterday and I'm kind of going through it today for trying to figure out exactly what license I need so that we can have basically alcohol on the premises and be able to serve it ourselves. And of course, there's a ton of information online, so I don't even know where to start with that one. So I'm just going to call the, uh, I believe it's the local permit and licensing office here in Port Orchard. So I'm just going to call them tomorrow, kind of figure out where I, I can start with that one and find out if our building is even zoned for something like that. So that is definitely something you want to look into. And having wine or anything at classes like this goes a long way. A lot of people love to have that along with like the paint and sip, the candle sip. And I'm just now figuring this one out because at all the previous classes I've done, when I started these years and years ago, I would just go to a place that already had these licenses, So I never had to worry about it. So unless you have something like that, where people can kind of mingle, get a drink and wait the 45 minutes to maybe an hour for their candle to cool. It's always nice to have them something do during that hour. Uh, so for this one, we decided we'd make a couple clamshell melts. So we got out four clamshells, poured wax again, poured oil again, uh, had them stirring for a few minutes. But again, that took up 10 or 15 minutes tops out of that whole hour. So they were still sitting for another 30 to 45 minutes, which isn't a big deal. Uh, we also had the shop in there. So everybody kind of got up, wandered around the boutique, shopped a little bit, which was great. And then of course we did have our own labels and I'll try to put that right here also that we printed out. Uh, it had the store name on it and the website on there. And then basically left the middle open so they could go through and kind of write out their own fragrances or write out the names, whatever they were doing. Uh, but I didn't have enough basically art supplies so that they can spend a little bit more time on their labels. So that's definitely something I would do, but I'd still like to find something a little bit different than the clamshells because those went pretty fast. Uh, I was looking, like I said in the previous video, at sugar scrubs, those can take a little bit longer sometimes, but I would love to find something to do that would take up like an additional 20 to 30 minutes. That way they're only sitting around at the end of it, waiting for maybe another 15 minutes for their candles to cool and then they can leave. But that's pretty much it for this one. Those were kind of some of the big takeaways I took from that one. Uh, if anybody does classes out there and you have a real good method uh, or something to do, an activity to do for people during that hour, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what other people are doing. And of course, if you'd like to see anything more from these classes, and I do have a class coming up where I'm going to record the entire thing so that people can see exactly how I handle these. Uh, if you'd like to see something else, please let me know and we'll see you in the next video.